started that radio show in the in the 70s and one of my first guests was this beautiful vivacious actress starring on Broadway who became one of my two sisters I was an only child and I write in the book that Marlo and Elaine May are my two sisters we've been friends for so long we've done movies together we've done theater together and I, I don't even know. We just did a television show. We just did New York One today. Uh, and nobody could sell the book better than Marlo. She <laughs> fantastic. So uh, this, is a, this, is a, this, this is a play that got to Broadway. But I promise you, as you will hear, the inspiration for it was Marlo. Called Relatively Speaking, Elaine May had written a two one-act comedies and we needed a third for another evening of theater. Having produced both death-defying acts and power plays, I was becoming somewhat knowledgeable about the three one-act format. Clearly, I needed another one-act, but one that complemented Elaine's two. I read many, but kept coming up dry. One day, Elaine called to say she may have found one, adding, see what you think. Elaine is an avid reader. Her first movie, A New Leaf, was based on a short story, Tender Heart, that she found in an Ellery Queen anthology. So when she told me this play was written by John Marticek, Maricek, the name meant nothing to me, or to me, obviously. <laughs> 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 I was hoping for Woody Allen or Dave Mamet, but I dutifully read Trotsky is Dead and liked it. It was a clever comedy that had never been produced in the U.S. We got the rights and again adhered to my policy of trying it first out of town. A year before I had taken a new play by the actor Charles Gordon Grodin, the Co-op Chronicles, to the Magic Theater in San Francisco. We had a successful run, enjoyed working with the artistic director, Christopher Smith, who was also directing the play. So I called Chris, and I told him of the three one acts, mentioning that Elaine was going to be the director. He read the plays and happily agreed to present them. Having worked with Marlo Thomas, we both agreed she would be perfect for the lead in the longest of the three plays, George is Dead. She read it and agreed to do the play. So in the fall of 2006, we took off to open in San Francisco. Before rehearsals began, Elaine realized she didn't have enough time to direct all three plays. I suggested we ask Jeannie Berlin. She had directed It's My Party when I ran the Arclight Theater. It starred F. Murray Abraham and Joyce Van Patten, and had been directing very well. As I mentioned earlier, Jeannie is Elaine's daughter, so we were keeping it all in the family. Fortunately, she was available and agreed to direct Elaine's other one act, On the Way. We needed a male lead for Trotsky is Dead, and for On the Way, and for On the Way. We wanted one actor to play both roles. Mark Rydell, the film director of On Golden Pond and Cinderella Liberty, had spent many years as an actor. We sent him the play, and he agreed to come to San Francisco. We had six or seven roles to cast, for which we auditioned many fine local actors. For the chauffeur in On the Way, we cast a young unknown named David Diggs. He co-starred years later in Hamilton in New York and won the Tony. He is no longer unknown. <laughs> <laughs> the plays did well. George's Dead specifically was hailed by all. So what next? Well, I was convinced I needed a major writer's name to go with Elaine's. As good as John's play was, his name was unknown. I didn't relish searching for a new one act, so I suggested to Elaine to try and combine her two one acts and expand George's Dead to a full-length play. Elaine agreed, and I waited for her to work her magic. It took her a while, but she did it. We now had our full-length play, and we sent it to David Saint. David is a fine director who is also the artistic director of the George Street Playhouse in Rutherford, New Jersey. He read the new play and said he wanted to present it. Oh, he added, but there's one big problem to be solved. You have to change the title. Why, I asked. Two reasons, he explained. One is that I don't want my subscribers to think that it's about the death of George W. Bush, mm -hmm. who was then president, and two, I don't want them to think it's closing of my theater, which was named George Street. <laughs> so we opened the play under a new title, Roger is Dead. <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> uh, 
that's a producer. <laughs> Barlow agreed to star once again. The reviews were good, the audiences loved it, but Elaine still didn't feel right about it. She said, let me make some changes, I've got some rewrites I want to do. Once again, Elaine, the time went by, and then Elaine delivered another version with her original title, George is Dead. It was starting to appear as if George had nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> this version was new and improved. I needed to find another out-of-town theater, and I wanted another star to play Marlowe's character's husband, who in this incarnation has new scenes with her. Years before on my radio show, I had met and become fast friends with the actor Don Murray. Don had been the male lead with Marilyn Monroe in Bus Stop, had co-starred in Advise and Consent, Bachelor Party, and The Hoodlum Priest, and was Kathleen Turner's dad in Peggy Sue Got Married. I'd seen him on Broadway with his ex-wife, Hope Lang, in the hit Same Time Next Year, and knew he liked theater. So I called him, I sent him the play, and he agreed to do it. Now to find another regional theater, with the hope of finally coming to New York. David Ira Goldstein was the artistic director of the Arizona Theater Company, and on a hunch, I picked up the phone and dialed his number. I didn't know him, but I liked a man with three names. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hunch was right. He responded to the pedigree of Elaine, Marlowe, and Don. He had, had one concern. Oh, no, I thought, not the title. Oh, no, he said. I want to play in two cities. Phoenix and Tucson. I was able to get everyone to agree, and we played successfully in both cities. But I still wasn't ready to open the play in New York. It's worth noting here that in almost all cities except New York, there are just a handful of theaters at most. In New York, there are more than 50, and most of them are on or near Broadway, and the competition is fierce, the reviewers unrelenting. We were always a success out of town, but playing New York, well, that can be different. Don, Don Murray returned to Santa Barbara. Marlo Elaine and I returned to New York. And it appeared that despite our successful runs all over the country, we weren't going to play in New York. One day, Marlo Elaine and I met at Elaine's, and Marlo asked me, what can we do about our play? I'm sorry, Marlo, I said. I don't want to produce it. Neither do I, said Elaine. I, I tried it twice to make it into a full-length play, but it's really a one-act. Marlowe then said, so you don't want to produce it, and you only want it as a one-act, so why the hell are we here? <laughs> you remember how hard it was to find an additional one-act, let alone two one-acts, I said. Well, how did you do death-defying acts and power plays, Marlowe asked. When I told her what we previously was written here, she said, well, you know Woody Allen. Why don't you call him? See if he has a one act. So I did. And Woody said he had one. But it had a big cast. I told him I didn't care. I read it, and it was funny. So adding in Woody's sister, Letty Aronson, who had been producing Woody's movies, I now had a co-producer and two one acts. The search began for the third play. I called Neil Simon, Larry Gelbart, David Mamet, all were engaged and didn't have time to write a new one act. No plays in the famous writer's trunk either. One day I was seeing a play at the Atlantic Theater and I arrived early. I started looking at the window cards hanging on the walls, depicting past productions. I was surprised to see that Ethan Cohen of the Cohen Brothers had written two or three plays that the Atlantic had produced. Maybe he could be our third playwright. Elaine, Letty, and Woody agreed, so I contacted him. Ethan agreed to write a new one act, and with everyone's okay, I decided to go straight to Broadway, not off Broadway. However, I was unable to get Woody to go out of town, so though it was going to be my third time in New York City with three one acts, this time would be quite different. First would be operating, first would be opening on Broadway, and second, there'd be no out of town tryout. Once again, we tried to come up with a title that represented all three plays. Since each concerned relatives, I had an idea, and excited, I met with the three writers and Letty, and I proposed my title. It's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> Dead silence from the room. Then Ethan said, how about 
uh, relatively speaking. I like it's all relative better, I said. Both Wendy, Woody and Elaine sided with Ethan, and that was that. It had been another long and arduous road to get to Broadway with three one acts, and I resolved never to do it again. <laughs> and yet... <laughs> <laughs>